I'm going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. This exercise is called Charleston Chain Reaction because during the Charleston, every decision you make with each pass affects the next and you have a chain reaction. You may be playing something in the beginning and then something completely different at the end because of that chain reaction. This exercise is a great way to test your instincts. If you're new to Mahjong or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to be the dealer for this exercise, so we'll get 14 tiles. Then I'm going to create a mock Charleston with no jokers. We have a joker, a west, pair, red dragon, one seven in cracks, singles, three six eight nine in bams, singles, one three five in dots with a pair of fives. What would you focus on for plan A and what would you focus on for plan B? If these were my tiles, I think I would focus on either little odds or five, six, seven, eight consecutive run. I was thinking maybe about a quint, but we have no strong multiples. A pair of west, pair of five, and a dragon. That's not near enough, especially with only one joker. So I think I would probably break these up and focus on number tiles. I think just because of the predominant pattern with the multiple, I would probably have one, three, five as my plan A, and then six, seven, five, six, seven, eight as plan B. Either way, we didn't use the winds, the dragon, and the nine. So that's what I would let go of. We need to take a photo of this though before we start because we gotta recreate this. Okay, we're gonna do west, red, nine. We're gonna focus on probably little odds for plan A. So let's pass these. We're gonna take a photo of that because we gotta recreate it. We got a one five. Those are keepers for little odds. Here's a little odds. We're just going to gather. We could do west, maybe, let's see. I think it's going to be just as risky regardless of how we break this up. So let's pass these three. We're going to take a photo. We got a flower may or may not be able to use that. We have tiles to pass, so we don't have to pick a hand. We're just gonna keep gathering for the category, which would be little odds, one, three, five. And here we have tiles we can pass. This is a little bit risky, but I think we even have a hand in here with no gaps. One crack, three bam, five dot, mix suit Kongs. So I think the risk is worth it. We'll take a photo. We have a potential keeper. There is a little odd hand with dragons, same suit, and that corresponds with one of our multiples. So I think I would keep that and pass these three. We'll take a photo. One thing that I was thinking here is we could still play an odd hand, but maybe consider the concealed hand 
135 in cracks, 579 in dots. But we have only two tiles to pass. We're on the across pass. So we have to let something go. We still have a hand in here, 135. So I think I would let that go, but look what we are left with here, like numbers with nines. So I think what I would probably do is let the five go and keep the nine pass defensively. We're gonna take a photo. So here we have four, six, nine. Here's a nine. Those are not helpful for little odds. So I think I would probably pass these three. And then we'll take a photo. Okay, and then we have a flower. So I think I would focus on one, three, five. That would leverage one, two, three multiples. So I would let those go. We could pass these three. No keepers. Okay, so we have, I think I would think of it this way, little odds with three discards. We have two hands that we could play, either one, three, five in mixed suit with flowers or one, three, five dragon. So I would keep all that and just continue to gather. So just remember, we have our category with three multiples, probably we'll only be able to use, well, if we play that mixed suit hand, we could use all the multiples. So we would have, let's say one, two, three, six discards. That's significant. So this was a tough Charleston. Let's reassess and compare that to consecutive run around the fives. Okay, here's the Charleston just as it was, and here's our dealt hand. We are thinking five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. I, five, six, yeah, this nine, I don't think so. If we get fours, we could do three, four, five, six. So let's keep the threes, and we'll pass these. I would break up this pair and then send a one so we're not left with like numbers and then probably a nine. Maybe what we could do is keep the one here so we have we don't have the matching dragon with the one. This would be a, an okay pass. So we have a four, five. Let's see, so that would go there, four, here's a five. And we do have tiles we can pass, so we can stick with what we have here and keep going. We don't have to pick a hand yet. Here's a flower, a four, and a six. We have three, four, five, six, seven. That's too long. If you look at the card, there, there's only one hand in the consecutive category that spans five numbers. All of the others are either three or four numbers in a range, and they will have multiples as well. So if we build around, build around the five, we could do three, four, five, six, or five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight, or three, four, five, six. We need tiles to pass, so I would focus on three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six of some kind. And we don't have to pick a hand, we're just gathering within our range, building around the multiple. Three, four, five, six. Four numbers in a range around the multiple. So we're going to pass these. Let's see, here's four, five, four, five. We do have four, five, six, seven. That is a hand with no gaps. We do have here three, four, 
three, four, four, five, five, like number potential, two tiles to pass. We're on the first left, so we have to let something go. Here's three, four, five. Maybe what we could do here is let the three go and keep the seven. Because we could do five, six, four, five, six, seven. There's an eight, that's outside our range. Here's a white dragon though. We could do three, four, five dragon. That would leverage the multiple and we'd get to use the flower and the dragon. So let's pass those. We could maybe do four, five, six mix suit Kongs. Four, five, six, seven. So maybe we can let this six bam go. We have three, four, five dragon. Four, five, six, mix suit Kongs, or four, five, six, seven. Three hands, or even more, that we could potentially play. So let's pass these. No keepers, and I would not pass like numbers. So here, I think what I would do is probably let the four bam go. We could still maybe play like numbers. Let's see, four bam. Since we have a flower, I want to keep the like number potential. Let's let that go. Two, four, nine. Here's four, six. Four, six. All right, now, since we built a multiple in here, we should reassess. So we have pair five, pair six. So whatever we do, we should use those tiles. So we have, we could do five, six flowers. We have two nines to pass. We're on the last right. We could pass blind, but I don't think I would. I think I would let tiles go and pass fully. We could do three, four, five dragon. We could do five, six flowers right here. Five, six flowers. Let's see, that could go here. We could still do four, five, six, seven. That would use two multiples too. So we didn't use those tiles with these options. So I think what I would do is pass two and one blind. We got the flower. So whatever hand we play, I would use flowers. Three, four, five dragon, or five, six, and two suits. That leaves those tiles for the optional cross. So I probably would pass maybe two, seven, nine. I think this is gonna be equally, well, maybe really five, nine, Two might be the the most innocuous pass. So let's pass fully. Part of me was thinking maybe we should keep the five for like numbers, but I don't think so. We've got plenty of strength in here. Oh, we got the four bam back. We could maybe do four, five, six mixed suit Kongs. So all in all, I think that was a good Charleston. We have options with consecutive run and three discards. Clearly we can't keep all of it. So if we compare results, we have flowers, four, five, six mixed suit Kongs. So that would be six discards. Or we could do three, four, five, Dragon, five discards with Joker bait. Oh, no, no, four, four discards. That's still six discards with Joker bait. I think probably leveraging the multiples would be better. So I think I would play four, five, six, and that's six discards. So. The results are the same, six discards. 
Since this is consecutive run, it might be a little more flexible than little odds. But I think there were more options with little odds. We could even still do little odds right here. But we'd have to let go of a pair of flowers. I wouldn't do that. We could do three, four, five, dragon, or four, five, six. I think what I would do here is keep the three, four, five, keep an eye on four, five, six, and let those go first. So I think this probably has a little more flexibility, but I think really the results were equitable. Let me know what you think about this exercise in the comment section below. American Mahjong is very flexible. You can make just about anything work. As a matter of fact, when people get their dealt hand, one player will look at those tiles and think of one thing to play, and another player will come up with something completely different. But they could both have similar results. If you have tiles at home, give this exercise a try and monitor your results. It's a great way to test your instincts. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers. <laughs>